Yad Ash e DeAndre Francis in Nishke, Ado Nishlenegie, Tatnezani in Nishle, Nake Bassin, Tonadin Dasche, Nake Dasinale, Agut Ego de Nenishle, Hastori Toch de Nasha. Good morning, my name is DeAndre Francis. I work at Native Health as the Indigenous Garden Educator. I am a Navajo tribal affiliation. I'm also part Hispanic as well. Uh, but I mainly affiliate with the Navajo side and I just introduced myself in Navajo and so with our culture we always like to introduce you know who we are and who and where we come from and so that's where we introduce our four clans which I kind of went into and my, my four clans are the Tango people, the Mexican people and my third clan is the water flowing together and my fourth clan is the Mexican people as well and then I am from Whoopawell Springs, Arizona which is on the Navajo Nation in northern Arizona um, Thank you for coming to our tea gardening series workshop. Uh, and then today we'll be featuring yarrow tea and we'll also be featuring chamomile tea. And the reason that we're going to be talking about tea gardening is that um, with the program that I work with, we want to be able to foster healthy eating choices, be able to foster and build and educate people's ability to kind of become more self-reliant in terms of producing their own produce and then also do it through a cultural lens so that people understand the backgrounds of these medicinal plants, the, the foods that they're eating, as well as also the history that comes to why these foods have been such a staple in terms of keeping people healthy for a long period of time and also keeping tribal members of the state healthy for a long period of time. And so today we're going to start with yarrow tea. <laughs> and yarrow tea is um, it's a wildflower tea. It's related to the daisies and it grows all throughout North America. It grows all the way from the East Coast to here in the Southwest, and it's become so adaptable and so uh, proficient in being able to grow in all these different types of environments that that's why it's a perfect addition to a herb, or a vegetable garden, because it's something that once it's going, once it's established itself in your garden, it'll be able to continue to grow, and then you'll be able to continue to harvest yarrow year after year. And uh, yarrow has a beautiful history, actually, because it's it being native to North America, it's also grown throughout the entire world, but specifically being uh, native to North America, the indigenous tribes all throughout North America ended up using it for different resources and different uh, utilities. And so on the East Coast, the Iroquois nations and, and, and the other tribes that made up their, their, their community, they ended up using yarrow traditionally for to treat cough medicines, to treat menstrual cramps. Um, they also used it as sort of like a first aid kit. And so with yarrow, it has anticoagulant uh, abilities. And so if you chew it or if you just apply it directly into any open wound, it'll help stop the bleeding and kind of help close up that wound. And so that's why it became extremely popular among also like uh, um, uh, settlers. And then it was even in Lewis and Clark's medicine pouch as they traveled with Sacagawea and she was able to source it through their entire journey uh, through the Pacific Northwest and so that's kind of gives you a little bit of the, the the history to yarrow in terms of like the other nations but here in Arizona yarrow also grows very wild I haven't seen it in southern Arizona but it grows wild in northern Arizona and it's been used traditionally by the Navajo and Zuni people we use it more of like a cough medicine um, I think it's more predominant within the Zuni cultures, but there's plenty of other Navajos that have seen it and use it. Uh, my background, I, we end up using a different herb uh, to kind of treat these same ailments, so it's not something that I have grown up with, but it's something that a lot of families have had experience using. A lot of times it just grows very wild in the communities and it's something that's been really rich and stays within our cultural leaders and our medicine men. And they continue to harvest it and source it today. And so that's why I kind of wanted to introduce Yara to everyone here because it's a great way to sort of like, one, it's delicious. I just tried some right now. <laughs> it's delicious. It'll be in an amber color. And kind of this version that we have here is uh, sort of a green tea color. And it's mild. You kind of have like a, it's very green tea like. And all of the health benefits that come with drinking yarrow also come with potential health risks too. I handed out a flyer to sort of like, everyone in the crowd to see, but I kind of wanted to go over really quick to the video. And all of this information was uh, uh, researched and curated by our, our um, Sumi Toha, who is our nutritionist and diabetes educator. And the reason I had her kind of look into this is because with all of herbal teas, they have such a wide range of uses and history that you want to make sure that the teas that you're using um, 
are you are going to be as as directly related to the the, the purpose that you're going to use it for. Um, and so I kind of want to go into the evidence-based facts into what yarrow has been potentially its potential benefits. So. Uh, it contains uh, flavoroids and plant-based chemicals that increase stomach and saliva acid to help improve digestion. So that kind of goes into the history of it. It's been used to help deal with uh, digestive issues. Um, and then it's also been used traditionally to help, you know, treat with wounds, with minor bleeding. It's also been used oral con con consumption. You can chew it. But with the Navajos and Zunis, what they do is that sometimes we have like terrible teeth problems in all honesty. And so sometimes people's teeth will fall out, people will get sore gums. And so what they'll do is they'll just get some yarrow and they'll chew it. And that'll kind of help stop the bleeding and help with the pain. Um, it's not listed here on the, in our, our fact sheets, just something that I'm aware of. And then we also use it to help treat with high fevers and colds. But with yarrow being more of a medicinal tea than a herbal tea, it also comes with all of the... Uh, potential health risks that you would normally associate with medicines. And so it's not recommended for pediatric use or breastfeeding, and it has had a history of causing miscarriages, so it's not recommended for any pregnant woman. Um, it can potentially make your skin more sensitive to light, and if you're allergic to ragweed or other types of weeds, um, you want to avoid it altogether and kind of just have like a skin test to see whether or not you can try it. Always be safe whenever using any herbal teas, because although the, their uses can't, it can't do exist for the uh, for other people. You never know how it's going to directly impact your health. So just be careful when you're doing that. Um, and then there's also like other medications that it can interact with, especially blood thinners, because Yarrow has a lot of, it has the ability to sort of dilate your capillaries. Um, and so just, just kind of sort of think about if you're taking any medications related to your blood, best not to pair it with Yarrow or to give it some time in between the usage. But that's a little bit into the, the, the health benefits and potential risk of using Yarrow and so a little bit of the cultural history of it, but it's really delicious and we're going to go into ex exactly how to plant and harvest it in just a moment. But for now, I kind of want to go back and feature, go back to one of our featured teas, which is chamomile. And so with chamomile, it's not traditionally grown in, um, in native gardens throughout North America. But the great thing about chamomile is that it still has all of the potential benefits of other herbal teas. And then it's extremely drought tolerant. It, once it's uh, found its way into your garden, it'll be able to kind of continue to self-seed. There's two varieties to chamomile. There's the, the Roman chamomile, and then there's also German chamomile. And they behave differently. I believe this is the German chamomile. And the way that German chamomile works is it, you'll, it'll sort of um, be seeded and start growing in the spring and it'll die off in the winter and it'll continue that process kind of do a self seeding so once you establish it in your garden it'll be able to continue on and the beautiful thing about both the, both the teas I'm mentioning here today is that they're extremely low maintenance uh, so you'll be able to kind of tend to your vegetable gardens and kind of let these grow in the background and then once it's time and ready you'll be able to have yourself a nutritional uh, nutritional and healthy drink in a term in in alternate weight um, a healthy nutritional drink as opposed to sort of relying on sugary drinks or flavored drinks this summer. I just suggest you start your tea garden um, right now as you begin all your vegetables. Um, and the great thing is that you can start planting some uh, chamomile uh, seeds right now. And now that's sort of like early summer, especially up in northern Arizona. Here in southern Arizona, you might want to wait till the fall to kind of plant them. Uh, and then with yarrow, yarrows, um, I believe that you can plant it in the, the fall. Um, but it's a wild, it's sort of, it's, it's pretty per, um, expansive throughout all of North America, so you can source it as a seedling, or you can uh, source the seeds out in the wild, or you can purchase them online and kind of scatter them throughout your garden, and they'll be able to kind of establish themselves. But, uh, sorry, <laughs> let me get back to chamomile really quick. Uh, so chamomile doesn't have a history of being, you know, traditionally used by Native Americans prior to um, uh, colonial contact, but it's a great way to sort of add to your garden and still be able to access all of its benefits. So let me go a little bit into them really quick. And so for chamomile's potential benefits, it may reduce sleepiness and anxiety, and then it also may relieve um, some uh, gastrointestinal conditions such as upset stomach or diarrhea, and then also has the ability to kind of be applied topically similar to yarrow. The yarrow I know is something that's more proven, but you can give it a shot with chamomile as well. And then just know that chamomile has some potential uh, risks as in it can give you, make you nauseated or dizzy and if you're allergic to specific types of pollens or uh, uh, daisies or ragweeds, then you want to avoid it altogether. And then it's also again not recommended for pregnant or breastfeeding women. 
Um, and then it has the potential to interact with some of the drugs like uh, War Reference. Uh, so that's kind of a brief little introduction to chamomile and yarrow. And then uh, we're going to briefly pause the video right now because we're going to go into the garden and kind of show people how to harvest it for yourself. And then we're going to have, we're going to come back here underneath the shade and kind of enjoy some more of the tea as we let it dry. The sunflower is like, it's got all these different types of petals in it. Uh, it's essentially the same thing. So whether you have the leaves in it or not, it'll have the same properties. It's just the leaves will give it a sweeter taste. And so with this, all you need to do is just pick it up, oh. put it in your bag, and then same thing with these ones. So the, the more brighter the yellow, the better. And then okay. see how this is dying off? If you want, you can pull this off as well, and they'll still be good to use for your teeth. And then this is going to die off for the winter, so you can harvest all of it before it's gone. And then this, see here, it's already coming, it's already growing, it's doing great. In a couple months, it'll turn up like this again. And then eventually, after next year, it'll start popping up again all over. And it's great. So this is a lot like yarrow too, where it also starts self-seeding. And once it's established itself in your garden, it'll be there for a long time. Not unless you just be crazy to do it, yeah, to wipe it out. But this, I believe, is the German chamomile. And so this is the one that's, this is why it's dying off. If it was the Roman chamomile, I think it'll keep growing and get bigger and turn kind of like a bush-like. This is the way you harvest it. So you're welcome. Uh, just know that you'll need probably a lot. <laughs> oh, <laughs> but, no, wow. Yeah. <laughs> but harvest as much as you want. I, and for the, the amount of tea that I made for uh, this afternoon or this morning, mm -hmm. I, har I had to use like a whole cup's worth. Um, so harvest a lot yeah. right okay. now. <laughs> I'm a harvest son as well. Yarrow is extremely drought tolerant. I've never watered this and it, it, it continues to grow. <laughs> and as things in my garden suffer with the heat increases, this yarrow seems to just continue to go on. I don't even worry about it. In fact, in my research in terms of chamomile and yarrow, they say that the best thing you can do is just to forget about them. <laughs> if, you're, if they're dying off, you're putting too much attention to them. <laughs> they're extremely well um, adapted to the environment. And also another really great thing, so you'll never need to water them once you introduce them into your garden. And another great thing too is that they have the ability to sort of uh, repel some pests because of their medicinal properties. Um, but when you harvest yarrow, you always want to be able to harvest 10 at a time. And then you harvest it, and you, there's a rule of thumb. So yarrow is really great. You can kind of trim it back just like grass and it'll grow back. Because it's similar to a ragweed. And so with these stems, kind of want to this one's really huge so we, we may have to like adapt to it <laughs> but um, for the most part you kind of want to leave two inches of yarrow left so let's take say for example you want to harvest this big old clump you just use a rule of thumb so you use your thumb kind of judge it from the base of the ground or from the base of the roots and that's your point of cut and if you want as much or as little as you want. Let's see how many bundles we got here. Oh, we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this is about 10 bundles here. And the great thing is you can use the entire plant to make your teas. It doesn't just have to be the flowers. The flowers will have more of that medicinal properties in them. And a great way too is like, how do you know whether or not yarrow is ready for me to pick it? A cool thing is you can pick one of these top flowers right here. So come over, come over. <laughs> Grab one of the uh, little white flowers, just kind of pick it off. Just one of them will do. And then what you can do is just sort of like rub it in your hand. And if, it's, if it has a really good smell to it, then you know it's ready to be picked. And so sometimes like the flowers may not be on there yet and you're not too sure, can I still take it? You want to take a piece of it, rub it into your hand. If it's got a good scent to it, if it don't smell like anything, let it be for a bit. But right now this has been growing all summer long, so I'm going to trim this back for everybody to kind of have a better walking space. Um, but yeah, you want to take the whole plant. And the great thing is once you have it like this, or if you want more flowers, all you need to do is just dry it out. Well, first of all, let's all have everybody gather some. So try and gather up to 10 stems and just remember the general rule of thumb to leave about at least a thumb's worth of it left at the bottom. You kind of grab your uh, trusty scissors, trim away. So you can target more of the flowers if you want. 
So the whole plant is, is utilized. <laughs> Let's talk about chamomile. Uh, so what you need to know about chamomile is just sort of like, well, let's look at the bags first. Since you jar, you're drinking it. <laughs> let's just know that the potential benefits are that it can help reduce. As we were talking about anxiety, it can help reduce your anxiety, give you that more of that calming feeling. Some say that it can also help with like anxiety, not anxiety, help with depression. Um, and then it's also really good because it makes you sleepy. Yeah, I mean, yeah. chamomile is like that's like the thing that <laughs> that's the thing yes. that we know most about chamomile. Yeah. Um, but it also can help with relieving anxiety, can help relieving your stomach uh, ailments, and then it can also be used similar to yarrow as like a topical agent, although I don't know of it being used like that, it's just one of the possibilities. And then with the potential, there's, since there are potential benefits, there's always potential risk. And this was curated by our diabetes nutrition educator. So with herbal teas, there's so many different uses for them. We want to make sure that what we tell you at least has some evidence-based um, information we need to do. Um, and then just like chamomile wrists, like th I like that she put that you can get nauseated and dizzy um, <laughs> or like drowsy. <laughs> um, and then if you're allergic to like marigolds, daisies, or ragweeds, then you wouldn't want to be drinking this too. I should have said that before you drank it, but I think you're right. <laughs> yeah, I, I asked for it, so it's cool. <laughs> and then it's not recommended for pregnant or breastfeeding women. I don't know exactly specifically as to why chamomile might be like that, but uh, probably because of uh, Oh, like it maybe could be too. Yeah, I'm not too sure, but with yarrow, that one's more, uh, it, it, it affects your blood, you know, it'll dilate your capillaries, so anytime like blood flow to the baby is altered, that could lead to complications, and so that's why it's had a history of miscarriages with yarrow, but we'll get to that in a second. Um, and then with yarrow, I mean yarrow, chamomile, just know that like you already kind of learned how to harvest it, you pick off the flowers, you, and then what you're going to do is, if you have a baking sheet, or just the, your dashboard <laughs> really you just kind of let it out there and the sun's going to do wonders to dry it out super easily okay. and you'll just kind of lay it out like on a baking sheet out in the sun on your window seal really phoenix is super hot that you could just leave it out yeah. <laughs> yeah. and it'll dry out so you want it to dry out mm -hmm. you want to make sure that's like nice and super dry and then the cool thing too is that um well, I mean, like the crate, the, the, once it's all dried out, you can kind of store it in like a mason jar or some tight con oh, yeah, con yeah. container mm -hmm. so that it doesn't develop any mold or, or fungus. Okay. And then um, it'll just like become like hard and flaky, and then you'll be able to brew it in teas and you know, all sorts. I brew it in that coffee maker. Mm -hmm. I just put it on top, <laughs> and it's pretty easy to kind of do it like that. Um, but you can, there will also be like seeds mixed in with your dry mix. Mm -hmm. and if you want, then you can separate those seeds and put them into your field. Or you can just have the tea. Okay. Your choice. So you don't need to crush them? Nah, I, the, if you look at how I did that, I just had them like this whole... So, <laughs> say if I had like this water going, yeah. and you just kind of... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, everybody's got different brewing methods. Yeah. Uh, but as long as it's dry, okay. then, then you can... Just like how you would like Navajo tea? Yeah. yeah. And Yarrow's going to be very similar to yeah, Navajo tea. Um, but that's the harvesting and then with planting like we kind of gave you a little idea about how to get the seeds from the, the, the petals that you've gathered today but you can always buy them online you can also use the same source that we did for uh, where we got the tea that you're drinking currently mm -hmm. and then if you want to do it in a pot because you said that you don't have like a outdoor space like this exactly mm -hmm. um, it should be pretty easily just kind of sprinkle those seeds into like a pot, a, a pot as well mm -hmm. and then kind of leave that by the window seal. Make sure, give that really good soaking and then it should be fine and then just water whenever it's dry and if you ever have the space then you can transplant it. Mm -hmm. What is the tea actually made from? Is it from the flower, the pollen, or the seed itself? Wouldn't it be the whole thing? I'm not too sure. I'm, I would imagine that it's the bud. The bud of it? Yeah, it's yeah. the bud. But the flowers too have, have like, give that extra aroma. That's from what I read. And I'm, I'm from what I'm drinking. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It tastes really good. I know. Um, so that's a little bit about chamomile. And then now let's go into yarrow. Um, how did you say that word that you know it by? Achilles. Achilles? Yeah. Achilles? So Achilles myfolium is the scientific name or the botanical name, but it's otherwise known as yarrow. 
And then every tribe probably has a specific word for it. I couldn't find the name of Yarrow in my language, <laughs> but I know what it looks like. I know where it's at. We'll see it. It says millifolium. Millifolium? Remember, I said milfoil. Milfoil? So that's, that's... Well, okay, okay. There's milfoil right there, too. Yeah, right there. And this here, Aster Asia. Aster Asia. That's, that's all daisies. Oh, okay. The family is all the daisies. Yeah. So that, so that way, if you know anybody who's allergic to daisies, I don't know people who that are, but there might be some. Just be be cautious if you get the Yara or going forward or tell them about it. And then just know that like with this, it's full sun, partial shade. But, but, but basically, it'll grow in any condition you give it to it because it, it grows on the east coast. And that's entirely different from here. <laughs> and it grows well in both conditions. But it, it'll adapt to whatever environment and the properties of it will adapt to whatever environment as well. So that's why when he was bringing up different this like different colors or different species that have different colors, people have curated for the specific purposes that they want. Because um, there's a whole wide range of uses for it, but it's all just going to depend on what your plant is and how you've developed it. And eventually, like how you curate it over time. Um, but the base, benef the base benefits of it are on the back. <laughs> Um, and so it contains like flavoroids. I, I mean, this chamomile also probably contains some flavoroids because I feel like my saliva is increasing. <laughs> but um, <laughs> but it'll help increase your saliva and stomach acids. So it'll help improve, like, help with digestion. Um, if you have like, I've always I've always loved herbal teas whenever I have like stomach problems because yeah. I, I eat like a goat. I'll eat anything <laughs> and that causes problems. <laughs> so I always end up having to like have tea to save me. I, like, here in the city, I just use green tea to save me, but mm -hmm. you can use yarrow, you can use traditional tea. Um, and then it definitely helps to like soothe muscles in the intestines and the uterus, which probably leads to why there might be complications for pregnant women. Yeah. And so just know that with yarrow, it's more of a medicinal tea than it is a herbal tea. And so what that means is there'll also be more potential risk. And so that's why like, as you'll see, yarrow's got more risk on there and more complications in terms of like what medications it can affect you. Uh, and so anything related to like blood thinners, anything re any medicines related to the blood, you wouldn't want to take alongside yarrow because of its, its medicinal uh, abilities. Um, and then, what's another thing? Oh yeah, and then it's been used by the Iroquois people. They used it to treat with like digestion issues and cough. Right? Um, that's kind of give you a little bit about what yarrow is. And then the good news is I have this beautiful little picture graph that kind of explains to you like when the best times to harvest it are. So the April, May, and June is for like the southern states, or which is Arizona as an example, <laughs> southern Arizona. Yeah. Uh, and then with northern, with the, the northern states, we're northern Arizona, and you can pick them in July, August, and September. And so that's what I'm more familiar with picking them, because that's around the same time that the Navajo's come out. I see, so this is harvesting, not yeah. planting. Oh yeah, so harvest yarrow and some yeah, yeah. Uh, And then I also have a little bit about like making sure like that rule of thumb is like cut at least uh, two inches off the ground, if you're going to take a lot. Um, but with that plant on there, it was kind of a beast. And so... <laughs> And why is that? I miss uh, that. Well, why do you do it two inches off the ground? Well, I yes? I believe it's for two purposes. One is it's like a it's like grass, so it'll just grow back. So you want to harvest as much as possible. And then yeah. the second bit is sort of like that. When it comes to like harvesting plants, you always want to make sure to like be respectful to the plants. You don't over harvest. You don't over graze. You always leave some for the next person. That's why we only harvested ten bundles too. It's because you want to be able to leave. Because it's since it's a medicinal herb, you don't want to take all of it. You want to leave that there and let it grow to the next person. Yeah. Um, and one good example of this, and the reason why it's so important, is that say for example, white sage is extremely popular. And what happens is that a lot of times, like people are poaching it because the, this practice isn't being taught, it's not being preached. It, there's this idea of leaving something the next person can harvest. Instead, they're just taking all the plant. And what that means is there's less in the wild, and then there's less for for ceremonial. So that's why you would want to leave that bit left. You don't want to just kill the plant entirely. <laughs> Perfect. And then how do you use, or how do you do Oh, yeah. Tea? Yeah. This one's kind of easy, actually. So let's uh, let's just take one. Let's take some of this in. And then we have some corn and corn. This is what I would do. It's like, well, you would let it dry out. Same thing as the pink baking sheet. It's like super dry and nimble. Yeah. And then what my family does and what I would do with this, uh, with like 
would do is you just kind of like fold it among itself, create like a little bundle, get like a piece of twine, and it'll be dry. And then you just brew it in the pot. You can do it like how the botanical interest does it, which is where they probably dried it up and then they chopped it. And then you kind of have it more tea like. But I like the bundle where it's easier. Mm. <laughs> That's what I'm used to doing. And you just get like a string. But there you go. And then, yeah, just with yarrow, just be sure that you can do the whole plant. And so just be sure that, that you're, you're not giving to somebody who might be you. But, oh, um, yeah. <laughs> but that's everything about yarrow and chamomile. And then if you have any specific... So the, the seeds for this, I don't think... Are these seeds? These might be the seeds. Yeah, I yeah. think they are. I think this one's super easy. You'll, it'll self-seed itself. Yeah, <laughs> it's super easy. <laughs> so I, it'll probably just start growing around wherever you're at now that it's all, all over a place like this.